Good day fellow investors. Now I have been saying already for a long time that everybody should own a little bit of gold in one's portfolio. Now you can own gold if gold prices fall to let's say 600 you lose 50% if gold prices double you double what you own the gold value of your portfolio. However if you own gold miners if gold prices fall to 600 you probably lose everything. However, if gold prices double, you don't just double that part of your portfolio, you increase it by 5, 10, 20 times, depending on what miner you are buying. In order to go deeper on that topic, I will discuss all the 50 holdings of the Van Eck Gold Miners ETF. In order to show that every miner is different, so each portfolio has to be approached, has to be fitted with miners that fit that portfolio. And another story is that the Vanek ETF is again an ETF that is skewed towards the biggest miners, which we're going to discuss in this video. I will later make more videos about the miners that are positioned from 11 to 50. And that will give you a different picture of what you can invest in the gold mining industry. However, if we look at the top 10 holdings of the ETF, you can see that 9.27 of it is in one company, Newmont, Barrick has 7.2%, the top 10 have a 54% weight in the ETF. That is a lot because the remaining 40% have then 46% weight in the ETF. This means that you are very much skewed towards the biggest miners. And that's not really proper diversification because as we're going to see now, the bigger miners are a little bit expensive, especially the royalty companies. There is one too interesting among them. So let's immediately start with discussing the miners. Before that, just a quick note. When you're looking at miners, lower cost, long reserves, lower the risk. Higher mining costs, higher debt, increase the risk of investing, however, also give much more leverage in case gold prices increase because the ma margins expand much, much better than with those where the margins are already big thanks to low mining costs or no debt. The first company I want to discuss is Newmont Mining Corporation, the largest gold miner in the world according to market capitalization. As you can see, all sustaining mining costs are around $900 per ounce, which gives them a margin of $400 per ounce, which is a healthy margin, but also indicates that the company would be in trouble if gold prices fall close to that level, which is always a possibility. You never know what will happen to gold prices. Mining costs are expected to be around 900 for the next 10 years. Everything that I say is sourced from the relative investor re relations page of the company. Operations are mostly focused 41% in North America, 31% in Australia and a little bit of diversification in South Af America and Africa. What is very important here to know is that Newmont won't be able to increase its production as its mines get depleted and new project projects aren't big enough to replace and grow production. But Newmont offers stability with relatively low costs, 900 per ounce. The company has 12 years of operating reserves with an average grade of 1.2 grams per ton. Further, the company has been really lowering its debt in the last few years. And now the net debt is just 1.1 billion, which is relatively low for that company. A little bit about valuations. According to the company, a 100 gold price increase increases the cash flow per share by 67 cents. But if that happens, as it has happened, gold prices have improved by 100 in the last 12 months, it will still keep the price to earnings ratio high and close to 40. The free cash flow yield would, however, be in 2018, I'm saying this, around 5 to 7 percent, which is a good, uh, okay return in this environment. If you expect stability, if you want 5 to 7 percent, that's good. If gold prices double, new stock price would do well as it did in the last three years where, where gold prices went from almost 1000 to the current 1300 and Newman stock price increased 70 percent. So what you can expect from Newman stability, little low risk. Of course, if gold prices go down, 
Newman stock will also fall. If gold prices go below 900, then there is a little bit more trouble. But Newman is one of the most fixed, most stable gold miners that you can find. However, the price to cash flow expected is around 5 to 7 percent. Good return, perhaps a little bit better than the SCP 500. So if you're interested, you can really look at such a company. For me, it's a little bit too expensive. A little bit better than Newman is Barrick Gold especially because the price has declined a little bit in the latest period. Barrick was usually the largest gold miner, but Newman's price went up and Barrick's price went down, as you can see in the last year and a half, from above 20 to the current 14. Barrick had some problems with their subsidiary in Tanzania and with their Veladero mine due to a leach incident. So that's perhaps one reason why the stock price has fallen. Nevertheless, it's still a very, very stable company. There is 4 billion in debt. However, the maturity of that debt is post 2032. So very, very long term and even lower gold prices don't bring to refinancing problems, which means that the company is stable or should at least be stable. Further, all in sustaining costs are expected to be around 730, which is much lower than Newman's but there is higher debt in this case at barracks. So you are there at the end, as you have seen, the interest rate on the debt is 5.6%. 4 billion on 5.6% is pretty much. What is very interesting about Barrick is that it has the largest gold reserves in the world, 86 million ounces. So that's pretty, pretty important. So if Barrick's situation stabilizes a bit, I wouldn't be surprised to see it have a price to cash flow yield of 10. So 10% cash flow yield, which is very, very good and better than Newman's. So you might take advantage again, if you want a company that will have stable production in the long term, a big pipeline, but producing a lot, well diversified, then perhaps now Barrick is a little bit better than Newmont. If you invest in an ETF, an ETF will buy more of Newmont and less of Barrick, even if Barrick is now cheaper. When the things revert, an ETF will buy more, more of Barrick and less of Newmont, which will be cheaper. That's why I don't like ETFs. I prefer to buy Barrick now that's cheaper than Newmont and vice versa in another scenario. All right, Franco Nevada is the first gold miner on the list. However, that's not really a gold miner, that's a gold royalty company. There is a video where I describe what are gold royalty companies. They invest in projects in the developing stage and they get a royalty from the whole production for the rest of the life mine, which it has been proven a very, very good business model since royalty companies became interesting and really grew in the last 15 years. And Franco Nevada is one that really did well in the past. However, that brings to price to cash flow ratio of 27, which leads to a yield of 3%, which, which is one third of Barrick's yield or half of Newman's. So yes, they are a good business model, very low risk, however expensive. Newcrest Miner is a very interesting miner, an Australian miner that has an extremely long reserve life. You can see here that it has almost 30 years of ore to be mined at current rates. The cash flow yield is 8.5% and about to increase as Newcrest had some issues due to a seismic event at its flagship mine in 2017, so we could expect better results in 2018. All sustaining mining costs are below 800, so that's a great margin of safety in relation to gold prices. Given the largeness of its mines, Newcrest has the potential to further grow in the future, which is not the case for Barrick and Newmont. The pipeline, the Lehir mine increasing, Cadia increasing production, further increasing, working on those production improvements. They can develop the Golpu project in New Papua Guinea. They have a lot of long-term pipelines that can really increase production as the reserves are extremely, extremely long. So for the same price, you can get a growth company in comparison to Barrick and Newmont. Also, Newcrest owns 14.5% of the Sol Gold project in Ecuador, which owns the potential tier one cascable operation with extremely high copper and gold intersections. If we look at the top copper intersection, we can see that Sol Gold has a lot of them from the top 30. However, you can also see that Newcrest is here on position four and five with the 
Vafi Golpu project, also with Kedia and so. So very, very interesting gold copper miner with growth potential and extremely long reserve life. I have heard that Australian miners traded in Australia are priced lower than miners like Barrick and Newmont traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So just because it is an Australian miner, it doesn't deserve a lower valuation. So if you're looking for growth, stability, long-term great projects, then Newcrest might be an investment for you. Gold Corp is another company focused on the Americas. It's all in sustaining costs are $825. So in the middle of what we have seen up till now. And the company expects to lower its mining costs by 20% in the next few years, increase production by 20% and increase reserves by 20%. If the company manages to do that, it would be one of the best gold performers in the next few years. You can see here that the portfolio is mostly focused in the Americas, Argentina, Chile, Canada and Mexico. However, to improve what they have been announcing, they will spend a lot of money. And their capital expenditure guidance is to spend around 800, 900 million per year, which is a lot when you have an operating cash flow of 1 billion. And that's something the market doesn't like. So you can see that in the last three years, Gold Corp's stock price has declined 38%, which is a big difference when you compare it to Newmont that has increased 70%. Nevertheless, if they manage to do what they have promised and you attach a price to cash flow of 9, 9.5, which is current, the returns might be very, very good. So this is a reversal story to look at. Agnico Eagle Mines will produce 1.5 million ounces of gold and expects to produce 2 million ounces of gold in 2020 with also in sustaining costs of $845. So another growth company that's focused on growth. The reserve grade is 2.2 grams per ton, which is my, much higher than the average. Most mines are in Canada with one in Finland and three smaller mines in Mexico. So major Canadian exposure lowers the political risk. However, most of Agnico's mice mines are underground, which can be costly and risky. Nevertheless, the company has been doing very well in the past safe jurisdiction, price to cash flow ratio is 15, which is a little bit high. Wheat and Precious Metals is another royalty company, smaller than Franco Nevada. It has deals with 20 operating mines and nine development projects. It has a dividend yield of 1.53%, which is the highest we have seen up till now. The price to cash flow is also high at 17.8, which applies a yield of 4 point something percent, if I'm not wrong. Now, a royalty streaming company doesn't have development costs, doesn't have to invest in capex, sustaining capex, whatever. They just get, they just buy a little bit of gold at a low price, usually around $400 per ounce, and then they can sell it at market price, which is a great business model. So we can't really look at price to cash flow. The best way to look at that is to price to earnings ratio, as their mines get also depleted, and the price to earnings ratio is 46, which means that the yield is a little bit lower when compared to what they have invested in the past. So again, royalty companies for me look expensive. They are great, they are good, they are growth, but they are a little bit expensive from an investment business common sense. Rent Gold Resources is an African focused miner with operations in Mali, Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, Senegal and the Ivory Coast. Now it owns a Kibali mine in Congo where they have spent 2.5 billion and they expect production to increase in the next year. But there is always issues with local governments. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been changing the mining code, which would increase the taxes payable, while the government of the Ivory Coast has issues with illegal gold mining, non-transparent exploration permitting, etc. So Africa, jurisdiction, Everybody is telling and that it is a problem and it is a problem. If you invest 3 billion in a country, you expect to get your money back for a long, long time. Not there is a government, oh, let's increase their taxes because they have already invested. They cannot back up and if they are not happy, they can always leave the country. That's a high risk and therefore it should be cheaper. The stock should be very cheap for that. However, the price to cash flow ratio is at 25, implying a 
4% yield. Very low for the jurisdiction risk. I would expect a much higher yield for that risk. Royal Gold is another royalty streaming company. You can see that here in the invested in New Gold's Rain River, Barrick's Cortez and Gold Corp's Penasquito. It's a little, there is a little risk. Now the price, price to cash flow is 18, implying a yield of what, 5 point something percent, which is okay, but you can see here how there is also risk with those miners, because if they invested in a mine that is about to shut down or to be idled because of lower prices, then there is no revenues, there is no royalty if a mine doesn't produce. So you can see here that the stock price has gone down to around 30, in 2016 January and now is at 88. So if you're patient, it pays to buy such companies when nobody wants to look at gold, not when it's very expensive to do so. Kinross Gold produces 2.5 million ounces of gold per year at all sustaining costs of around 1,000, which are a bit higher than what we mentioned previously, but has a price to cash flow of just six, but a price to free cash flow of 75 as the company has higher investment costs because it's developing a lot of projects. It's expected that all the projects would be developed at 2020. The, as the company has no debt maturity up to 2021, it can invest heavily. The Tassiast phase two will increase production from the current 250,000 ounces to 800,000 ounces. So if you want a growth story, this is a very interesting company. However, the costs are a little bit higher, so you can expect higher leverage to gold prices from such companies. Now, these are the bigger miners, except from Newcrest. I wouldn't invest now in those because I am perhaps attracted by more risk and much higher potential that gives me much more leverage because I want to keep a small part of my portfolio in gold and have a good effect on the other part of the portfolio because investing in gold in miners is a hedge not an investment because what is the value of gold apart from that i really look forward to showing you the other 40 miners and then after we have seen all the 50 miners you can get a great idea of what best fits your risk reward appetite your portfolio and how to hedge it at this moment in time, it's extremely important that we are hedged for currency devaluation, for market crashes, for turmoil, for more monetary easy helicopter money. And one way to be hedged is invested in gold miners. There are other hedges. We will all cover them as it's a very, very interesting topic. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments. What was I wrong somewhere? probably was because I didn't dig that deep into the companies. So looking forward to the comments and see what I can learn from you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.